time to lift the anchor. So first I need to start the engines. You can do it without the engines, but that would be for the more advanced. <laughs> And the reason why we check for the water is while we were static there might have been a jellyfish or a fish or something like a plastic that actually got into the intakes and maybe clogged it or uh, the impeller might have been damaged or something like that. If the water is not running fast enough or quick enough your impeller is actually basically burning itself up. Before you lift the anchor you need to check the wind direction of course it will be from the north or actually from the front because we are at anchor but look at the wind strength look at the boats around you so you can see there's a boat and our anchor is going all the way there so if we lift it now anchor and we move into we can actually go into that boat there might also be other boats because if a boat has anchored there it might have put a long chain out and he might be right over your anchor so you need to check making sure that the guys around you knows that you're actually going to lift the anchor so and then we can start preparing the anchor for us it's pretty easy um, I need to I need to just unlock the anchor here because it is locked so we need to just unlock it and for that just a little one lift it up so now it's clear to come up and now if you can look over there that is the bridle so the bridle is attached to the chain or with a chain hook onto the anchor chain which is now running all the way that side over there but at this moment I think the bridle is just like going in and it's somewhere there now the reason why we have a bridle is that the chain should not come underneath the hulls that's number one and also reduces our spin but the reason why we need to check that the chain doesn't go under the hull um, so if let me just show you the instruments we have a couple of instruments so you can see that is our speed lock um, that is a thrill 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 but we have a couple of instruments and one of them is a forward looking sonar which is a little protrusion also an L and that side we have our instruments for for the side sonar scan okay I think we're ready are you ready <laughs> okay she might think is right I need to look here and make sure that the chain is following exactly the chain is like that because if the chain goes like that it might go under the hole and then damage the instruments and the same on this side so if the boat is swinging like that then the chain is like this just scraping up and damaging all the instruments okay so for that I'm checking the chain over here currently is hanging kind of like forward and in the right direction for me I'm going to use the remote here because I can see what's happening with the chain and if the wind is blowing actually in no circumstances shoot you but if it's on on just with the chain weight you can pull the boat with the, the weight of the chain slowly forward and you can use the windlass but under normal circumstances I will not advise that um, so what we do is we always use the engines to propel us forward and then lift the chain up as we go forward so we must make sure the chain don't go like that but it also should not be stiff as that so depending on the wind if the wind is strong the impetra will need to have more engines on if the wind is not that strong, it's idle is fine. 
so I'm going to look at the chain and I will give her directions which we can shout and scream at I know very windy conditions is not working so we have hand signals to say go that direction go that direction and you will see what we do okay ready So we don't use the windlass to pull the boat forward. And if the chain is too stiff, I'll stop and wait for Pietro to bring the boat closer to the to the chain. Okay. The boat hook is here, so for my side, I just to make sure that it will come up, and that I can see that uh, bridle rope was over it. So I put it up slowly. It comes through. It comes through. Very good. And now I just need to take the bridle off. And for now I'm going to put it there and I've got this elaborate system here that I need to bring in Okay, while I'm doing this, Pietro is supposed to keep the boat into the wind, which is not happening, because I can feel the wind has changed. <laughs> and it's very important to keep the nose into the wind, because the boat has been moved backwards by the wind, so the natural thing is, by default, the chain will be like this unless of course we were turning around to some rocks or some other ob obstacles or unless the wind has died down and we're just floating around so but like now the wind was blowing constantly from that side so in theory the chain should be like this into the wind so just use your ears look at the instruments and making sure the wind is always coming from the front and then Pietro will take it. Um. Okay, like that direction. Let me show you guys quickly. You can see now the chain. There goes the chain. Quite stiff and it's going in that direction over there. Yes, an event. Something else that I'm looking at while we do this, I'm looking at this pile. I'm looking at this pile of chain here. Um, and the thing is, the chain might go up all the way and then block the incoming chain, and that is a big noise and big no no. A little bit more forward, faster forward. So now I'm waiting for the chain to slow and then I can winch up again. Now you can see the chain is going to our starboard side, so I need to show Pietro to go that side. Starboard! Because this is now, it's not dangerous yet, but if it continues, it might get to the hole. As we get closer to the anchor, it will get tougher and tougher for the windlass to pick it up and it will 
you will need to make smaller and smaller and quicker and quicker adjustments. At this point, Pietro will then also tell me how much chain is left. So there's about four meters of chain left. So it means we are very, very, very close to the anchor itself. Go forward. If the anchor is so hard set, then sometimes what we do is we actually then lock it and we overrun it. So let me show how we do that. So if you suspect that it's very set deeply and the mantis is known for that, then I will lock it here and it's locked. Okay, overrun, go a little bit forward. Then you will see the chain is actually now being pushed quite and I can feel the strain. I can hear it. Okay, I think we I'm going to test it. And, and just like that, it's loose. Ah. Okay. That noise, look what happens here. As you can see, the chain went all the way to the top and now it's blocking the incoming chain. So what we need to do is, we just need to kick it over. So there's now space again for the chain pile to grow. When it gets closer to the top, you must be going up much slower, slower. Look, it turns by itself, turns, turns, and you must wait till it turned. Otherwise, it will make a gouge in your boat. And then over there, I'm getting it as close as possible. Then I lock it and just drop a little bit. There we go. Now we just need to take the bridle. What we normally do is we just put it through here and we hook it and we secure it. We are lifting anchor while we are having a current. Not a big current, this is slack tight. Bridle. So we have now slack tight. Um, <laughs> this is actually grounding every now and then. Bump, bump, bump. Uh, so we're not not sitting still at it, but we do have some bumps which is not nice but so we have wind and we have current so that's very tricky so let me tell you what we did we have a place where the anchor is dropped so we we have marked every time when we drop the anchor we mark it where the anchor is and then, then we can see how we how we swing and how far we are. So now we're currently 38 meters. So on this one, you can see the wind is coming from that direction. It's trying to push the bow that way and the current is trying to push us this way. So two opposing forces here. So one thing, I know we need to get there. So I'm going to try and turn Sisu. So I'm, I'm pivoting. I'm making sure that we stay there because Peter is busy with the bridle. Now you will see the wind is correct, but we're still not there yet. Which means the current is busy pushing. The current is busy pushing us. Sorry, I'm, I'm listening also for Peter. She's giving directions there in front. So she said the train is behind us. Um, so I did move a little bit forward while I'm talking to you guys. So now, look at the wind. We're going backwards.
Yo, the wind is strong. So So I'm mocking now the wind at that angle because the current is pushing us a different angle and you can see we need to get to that point so mark the wind and that means the wind needs to stay at that angle and the current is now pushing us the other way so I think we're very close to the anchor I think so yeah, just keep the wind at a certain angle, which is very difficult because you always have to pivot almost all the time to, to make to make the corrections. And looking at Pietro, looking at the wind. So the wind is still like this and it keeps on pushing the bow that way. Okay. Anchor is up. <laughs> So there's a couple of pointers that you need to to think when you do this. Uh, lifting the anchor or dropping the anchor for that matter in a current. And we try to do it at slack tide but it's we got grounded and it's not a good feeling. You can see it's very very uh, very gloomy but also very very shallow.